So Marketing 101, getting to know your ideal client. We are in the target audience series. This is week two. If you haven't had a chance to connect with me, please do. I'm Laura Dunkley. I'm a fractional CMO and consultant at Acorn Studio Marketing. And if you missed last week's session, this is week two. This was week one, defining your target audience. It is currently free on our YouTube channel. And there is also a download of the slides available for last week as well. And you can find it there. Our agenda for today, step one, step two, we're going to revisit that um, defining your target audience. Then we're going to get into knowing your ideal client. We're going to go through some guiding questions that are going to help you understand your, your um, how to define your ideal client. We're going to go through the primary and secondary profiles that are on the template, as well as show you the Garden Grows um, example. And then we're going to talk about next. Um, and what to consider and how, ooh, that's going to be in there as well. So review target audience. What is a target audience? It refers to a specific group of consumers identified as the intended recipient of a product, service, or marketing message. By defining our target audience, it helps business owners be more effective and efficient in their marketing strategies. And the step one was first to identify who your targets, your stakeholders are. Who are the key people that um, are currently or what role do they play in the success of your business? Step two is breaking that down into audience segments, right? Primary, secondary, tertiary, they're kind of buckets, right? So we're going to take those stakeholders, we're going to figure out who our target audiences are, and then we're going to go primary, secondary, and tertiary, and then get start to put a little bit of information around who they are. And then we're going to get into knowing who our ideal client is. So before we jump into what to consider, let's figure out why we even bother identifying our ideal client. Well, identifying and getting to know them, your ideal client, it helps us focus our marketing and service delivery efforts more effectively, ensuring better outcomes for both our, um, our businesses and our clients. And what benefits like, why do we even do that? Well, we get targeted marketing strategies, and it speaks directly to the needs, preferences, and challenges of our ideal client. Why does that do that? Because it makes them, it's about them, right? It's not about you. And that helps to increase engagement and conversion rates. Remember, we talked also in previous sessions about the funnel, right? Our content has to move people through the funnel from awareness all the way to converting them into customers and building out loyalty. It also helps us refine our offerings, right, to better serve or provide them with products and serve their needs, leading to higher satisfaction, loyalty, and referral rates, because we always want that word of mouth that's so key, right? People value people that are referred to outside of your business, and that helps you grow your business. Third is it aligns your values and operational styles. And why is that important when an ideal client, knowing your ideal client, who they are is aligning with your values and how you do work, it creates a better, more, more harmonious and productive work environment. And we know that's just good for everybody, right? A better environment, better relationships, not only make us all happy while the work is being done, but it will help increase the opportunities for them to come back and also for referrals. So we started out with that stakeholder map. And there are so many different stakeholders, but today's session and primarily most of us as entrepreneurs do focus on our customers. So today it's about the customer. And we had that stakeholder matrix. Remember, we meet your needs, least important, and that would be bringing all of that information from the map all over here. Now we're focused on that key player. And that's the information that we took, remember, and it went into the primary, secondary, and tertiary audiences. So what we wanted to talk about today is what are those things that we need to consider when it comes to your ideal client? Most often we think, oh, they just, it's either we like to work with them or they have budget or we think of two or three things maybe that becomes their ideal, our ideal client, but there's actually a lot of things to consider. Now, different things will have different weights and different importance for you, but today I just want to make sure you're aware of all of the things to consider. 
So for sure we need an alignment, right, with our products and services for who they who they are. Like if they don't need and want your products or service, they're probably not going to do business with you. So that's kind of an important one that you'll probably pull from your business plan. Budget, for sure they need to have budget to work with you. Unless you're charity and things like that, but we are talking about a profitable business at this point. So they do need um, budget. How much is something to be discussed, right? Decision-making process. Make sure that your ideal client knows the decision-making process within their organization. Like they have to know, if they don't know and if they're not your ideal client. So they do know how to, to, to do work and typically they will be part of the decision. So if they are the, and this is more of a sales 101, but if they're sort of the gatekeeper and they, they, they are the ones that are looking for to connect with you, make sure they know who within the organization is the decision maker and how, and how to move the sale through. So that is number three, business size and industry, what's best suited for your products and service. It's good information to have. Company culture and values. This is important, but how much of it's important to you will depend um, on your analysis. But when you align, remember we talked about the alignment, harmony and ease of working together uh, does make a difference, right? Um, Long-term potential, do you see them as repeatable? If you are going in at the beginning and you're going, well, they don't check off all the other, other ones, but there's so much potential. I do see growth in this area and I'm willing to do that so they go into the ideal client bucket. So do consider that. Willingness to collaborate, shared value and respect. If they're going to work together with you, it's going to make, again, it goes back into that harmonious environment, right? The collaboration is so important. Um, location. This is just basic um, and a high priority. If you're going to be online and you're good and they can... Um, uh, you can go across the country or across the world. That's important, right? Because all of a sudden now, if you can open up your market to a much larger market. But if you're only location-based, um, you do have to really think about where they are for their ideal client. Because maybe eventually you'll expand into another market, but do focus on where, where you are right now, who your ideal client is. Reputation and ethics, oh, definitely a big one. Make sure you guys are on the same page when it comes to ethics and reputation. Market position, growth potential, for sure there's more opportunities and success when, when you're positioned there. Communication style, definitely consider it. Feedback and improvement, are they willing to give you feedback and improvement? Maybe you're still learning, maybe you're just getting started. Your ideal client may be one that you can test and they can give you feedback. Strategic fit, does it fit within your business goals and directions? Um, is there extra value through networking and referrals? And legal and compliance requirements, Are do you have the credentials and skills to ad adhere to um, what they need. That's when you get into specific industry, perhaps it's the medical industry or a legal industry, make sure that you're certified to serve them. So that's just a list of some of the things to consider for your ideal client. Now let's jump into the template and guide. And these are the sections that we're going we're gonna to talk about. It's the guiding questions and then the persona profiles. So what are, this is an extension of that guiding questions consider all that ideal client, but now let's like get into building out this primary and secondary. It's like, okay, we have an idea of who they are. Now let's get focused. So what needs, frustrations, and challenges do they have? Um, what drives them to make purchasing decisions? How does your idea service or product help them? And I encourage you to take the time to fill out this form. It's going to be the first step to get more granular as we go down into our avatar profile. And do do your research, right? Primary research is going to be um, interviewing potentially your ideal client or um, other audience research that is out there, surveys, maybe there's some focus groups. Secondary is going to be things like industry research or things like that. So start to pull all of that together to inform it. Um, to inform the answers to this form, but also your business plan and who you are and what you want out of your business. 
And then also, are you currently, um, are they currently users of a similar product or service? Do they already know about, um, do they have a basic awareness about what you do? And are they at a competitor? Are they happy with the competitor? Um, understanding where they are in understanding about what you serve is going to really help you serve them. Why would they choose your product or service over your comp competition? That comes from your competitive um, advantage, your unique selling proposition that's going to come out of your business plan as well. What media do they use? This is really important as you start to define your marketing strategy. If they're hanging out on LinkedIn, there's no sense in going on TikTok. Or maybe they like old fashioned or industry print. And I say old fashioned, isn't that awful? Um, maybe they like print. Maybe they go to trade shows, like standard traditional. So just get to know them. This is something you can probably pull from secondary and your observations, but also you'll get to know stuff more as you go along. What action would you like them to do? To do? Buy, donate, volunteer, be an ambassador, because there's more than just selling your product. You may be looking to acquire talent, um, and that's where you're going to shift your stakeholder map. If you get to this point, you go, oh, I just really want my focus is to get volunteers or employees. And you're going to go, well, then we should go back to the stakeholder map and, and revisit uh, what bucket we're pulling from. So this is all part of your exercise. Also know, is there a secondary audience to consider? Who are they and why and when? Now the persona profile. So you've got all this information and you're gonna pull from that as well as some other things. And you are gonna do that traditional psychographic, demographic, geographic, you know, all the usuals, but I want you to get into more and really understand their, their, their um, attitudes and their values. So let's go through the list. What's the age, gender, gender, how they identify themselves and their mindset, location, do they have children? What's their family life like? Um, education level, does it matter? Um, entertainment, income, personality types and attitudes, a big one, really important. Um, values, what are their interests? Current lifestyle, future lifestyle goals, something to consider. Spending behaviors, buying behaviors, purchasing motivators, things like that. Um, really important to get into their mindset because all of this is going to inform how we do our marketing, how we reach out, what kind of culture we're trying to build. Um, so do get into that. Don't, don't get into to just learn about them and then worry later about how we're going to use it. We always want to jump forward to the tactics at this point. Let's just get to know them. Media consumption and their influences, you can put that here as well. So the left column is primary, the secondary column of audience, the secondary, secondary audience is on the right column. Yeah, um, what it is, it's a garden center that has brought on a landscape design service. So now they're doing this business plan for this landscape design service. So they really do want to know who is, um, who their ideal client is. So just to give you context, if you don't know the company, our demo company. And so what they have is for the primary audience is the new families. And then we have retirees downsizing. Now, one of the criteria here is going to be, they got to have a garden. Like you might, it just, I mean, bottom of the line, before we even get here, it has to be a family with gardens. So whether or not it's a backyard garden or it's a patio garden, they still have to have a garden. So you're going to still have that. That's where the segments come in, right? Your primary segment button, bu bucket, the segments, that's where you're going to identify all of this. Now we're getting into the nitty gritty. So we've got into all of these things, even their values, right? Spiritual, they believe in community, they support environmental concerns. And look, the secondary one and the values, they share that. Wow, that's really important because now if I target that, I'm going to actually go across both audiences. So you might start to see some parallels and some similarities. Let's jump into interests and hobbies, right? What are they doing? Where are they hanging out? So if they're going to yoga, they're working out in the gym, they go to book clubs. Oh, book clubs. Wow. Well, maybe this can inform some things, right? All of a sudden your brain starting to go into some ideas. Again, don't get too into the ideas, but do know that this is why we're doing this. 
lifestyle, what kind of lifestyle do they, they like to have? What is their behaviors and buying habits? So say for our primary audience, which is families, moderate luxury lifestyle, they like to show off their house, they like quality at a good price, still doing big projects around the house, they like to do things themselves, they go to gardening shows and they drive to events, but like to support local. Wow, that's a lot of information that is gonna inform your marketing. Let's go to the other side. So behaviors, buying habits, purchase motivators of the retiree, which is on the right. So they, they save, they like a moderate lifestyle, smaller projects around the house, do it yourself for some, but they need to hire sometimes. Fewer new projects, they're in maintenance mode, maybe they're taking care, gardening to indoors, they like to support local, but they won't drive far, right? Like we're really getting into their mindset. We're totally going to different have a different marketing um, tactic around the retirees. Media consumption, they get ideas online. Retirees, they watch local news and they read the newspaper. Like very different. Where are we going to put our marketing budget if we're going to focus on one or the other? And then there's a section I like to put in here called a day in the life. And this is where you get to write the story. Write a little short story. Take them through their life. Um, and, and it could be in a story format, it could be in point form, but really do, and it shows that you understand them. So if you can put it into story, you do understand it. And I would write this, write this down. And then we get into a little bit more in the empathy map, which we're going to talk more about, um, next week, but go into understanding what they think, what they do, what they feel and what they say as it relates to your business. So remember, we're talking about the landscape design service here. So what do they think as it pertains to landscape design? What do they do as it pertains to landscape design, right? So if you, uh, whatever business you offer, whether it's a product or service, put that in there and then fill it in for your primary and your secondary. So let's go for an example here. They have what they feel. So the primary audience is, remember, it's the new homes, the young people building their, their larger homes. They feel a nice yard is good for their health, family, and community. Remember, that's really important. It's like, so when you create your marketing creatives or your marketing copy, you're going to speak to that because now they're going to relate to it. It's like they totally understand who I am because they know how I feel. So that's why we do that. The retirees, how do they feel? They feel a nice yard is good for their health, family, and community too. But maybe they don't need as big of a, um, a yard, right? So just this is only one piece of it. You have to put it all together. Um, what, what they say, this is where you can put some quotes in, make them go up, obviously. I'm tired of all the mud in the yard. I want a place where my kids can enjoy playing their fr with their friends. I don't have the expertise to plan the garden the way I want it to be. Okay, that's good to know. So what about what our retirees are saying? Well, my garden is my safe haven. I wish I had some help to set up the garden and take care of it. I like when the grandkids come over and enjoy playing in the yard. See, all of this goes around in their mindset. So do some brainstorming and um, start to put some things together. Also identify what their challenges are and get into the details of that and what motivates them. So moving into a new home for um, uh, our, our new home builders, like what motivates them? Moving into a new home, new build means that there isn't any landscaping or place for the kids to play. Mud's coming in, it makes the keeping the house a challenge, right? So they need to get their gardening done. They want that done, that's a motivator. So for our retirees, what motivates them? They want to start living the retirement as soon as possible. Life is short. They don't want, they want the extra help, right? They want to start living and using it. Um, so that's really important. Challenges and then for sure the motivators. And then finally, how can your business help your ideal client? Your primary and your secondary. And make sure you put that in. That's why this one is green. This one's really important. This reminds you on how you serve them. It basically takes it all that you've written and how it relates to your business. And this is the, this sets the stage for us getting into creating our avatar. But even if you get to this point, 
this is really important. Make sure you have this document there. It's readily available and you refer to it often when you start to do any of your communications, your marketing, or even considering new products and services. So that is sets us up for next week, which is getting into that persona, right? We'll go a little bit more into that empathy map. We'll, we'll work through that. But really at the end of this, I want you guys to be able to have this persona created.